let's keep going and let's look at the hormones to regulate the uh, water reabsorption in the nephron and the hormone you are very familiar with is called the vasopressin also called ADH antidiuretic hormone you learn this neural hormone in unit one when we talk about the hypothalamus the hypothalamus you have the vasopressin cell so this is the vasopressin cell from a uh, one nuclear nucleus in the hypothalamus is exon extend now that's the exon of this cell and this is actually my picture I study vasopressin for my dissertation and I stand this picture so its exon extend out to the posterior pituitary gland and release vasopressin so directly release from here and this hormone will go to the kidney and regulate water reabsorption in the uh, last 80% of the nephron so that's where it's regulated so let's see uh, what happens so vasopressin regulate water reabsorption so in the distal tubule part they they first make it impermeable to water so let's look at this one that's when you don't have vasopressin so the lumen go to here is very diluted it will go through the collecting duct and when you keep going through the collecting duct go deeper the outside environment is more and more concentrated so naturally water want to flow out so if this is a normal cell membrane water gonna flow out and it become very concentrated and because we want to prevent this from happening we want to regulate it so the cell membrane in the renal system in the organs of renal system they make it very thick impermeable to water so the water could not flow out so without vasopressin this diluted lumen will keep going down and eventually the urine is very diluted and what's the function of vasopressin vasopressin will put water channel so it will make the cell membrane permeable to water so that's what happened when you have a lot of vasopressin so vasopressin will make the cell membrane become permeable to water so with a lot of vasopressin that's what happens in the collecting duct the lumen going through the collecting duct and because the outside environment is very concentrated so water naturally want to flow out to dilute the concentrated environment and when the water flow out the lumen become more and more concentrated and this part this is the peritubial capillary and in the one surround uh, the the deep part go to the deep part of the of this tubule we call them vessel recta we'll talk about the vessel recta this is a very important capillary for reabsorption and because if the water move out if the water stay here it will dilute this environment and eventually it will mess up the concentration gradient so we don't want the water to stay in the medulla part and the only way we can do is once the water flow out we, we send it away and that's why you have the peritubial capillary and the vessel recta its main job is to to reabsorb so once the water flow out it will go into the vessel recta go into the blood so and the vessel recta quickly send the water away so it has no chance to dilute this environment so it won't mess up the concentration gradient of the medulla and let's look at the molecular level what happened to vasopressin vasopressin is a neural hormone so it's a, it's a peptide hormone and it has no problem being transported by blood and it will bind with the uh, vasopressin receptor and when when you bind with the vasopressin receptor it trigger the second messenger system so and you use the cyclic mp as the second messenger and once it bind with cyclic mp it will do the response inside the cell which is to put more equiporin 2 equiporin 2 is the water channel so it will cause the up regulation of equiporin 2 so from the cytosol back to the cell membrane and you put more water channel on the apical side of the cell membrane it become permeable to water so the water want to go from uh, the lumen back into the ECF because water will always want to go to uh, dilute the solute so more equiporin 2 
being put on the cell membrane, more water can be taken back. And if you drink alcohol, especially beer, you feel like you have to pee a lot. And that's because the, the ethanol, ethanol will regulate vasopressin release. And when you drink alcohol, alcohol inhibits the vasopressin release. So when you inhibit the vasopressin release, that's what happens in the uh, distal tubule and collecting duct. What happens is, well, you inhibit the vasopressin release. So no vasopressin, no water channel. And this cell membrane is impermeable to water. So those diluted uh, lumen, when it goes through the collecting duct, it won't be able to take water back. So it will keep being diluted, it will keep going down to your bladder. And when you drink beer, you drink a lot of, of water inside the, the beer. So all of this water will go to your bladder. That's why you, you pee a lot after you drink alcohol. And let's look at the vessel pressing. What can trigger vessel pressing release? So there are three mechanism can trigger vessel pressin release. So release from the hypothalamus is exon extend to the posterior pituitary gland. The first one, the most important one, osmolarity. Your body's osmolarity is well, well maintained. And in unit one, I, I tell you, you feel thirsty before you have severe dehydration problem. So if you feel thirsty, you drink water, your osmolarity should be well maintained. This is how sensitive your body uh, is to your to the osmolarity. So you have a very good osmoreceptor. And when the osmoreceptor uh, sends your osmolarity start to increase, it will go to the uh, it will you will ask the hypothalamus release vessel pressing. This is the biggest trigger. And let's look at the other two. The other two decreased blood pressure. So when your blood pressure decreases it will trigger the barrel receptor, of course. And barrel receptor will trigger the sympathetic response, try to increase your blood pressure. That's what you learned in unit two. But today you learned in the integrative physiology, your, all your body work together. It's very rarely you only trigger one system and leave the other system um, doing nothing. Especially they know the other system can also help as well. So what happens is this barrel receptor will also send a signal to the hypothalamus as hypothalamus release vasopressin. And the vasopressin can take water back. So when you take water back, you fix the decreased blood pressure uh, problem. That's why you will, you will trigger vasopressin release. And also vasopressin is called vasopressin because its function is it will cause vasoconstriction as well. So the second effect of vasopressin is vasoconstriction. So uh, when you constrict the blood vessel, blood, blood pressure go back. That's why it, it makes sense to trigger vessel pressing release when you decrease blood pressure. The third one, uh, when you decrease blood pressure, decrease blood volume, the blood go to the atrium, the heart, uh, decrease. And the, the atrium release a hormone called AMP. We'll talk about it next time. That's the hormones uh, have totally the opposite effect. That's, that hormone is, is when you drink too much water, it will make you pee. And the update effect when you decrease the atrial stretch, and that's when you have loose water, loose blood pressure, blood volume. And you will also send a signal to the hypothalamus and trigger the vessel pressing release. And all of them will trigger vessel pressing release it will go to the kidney, it will go to the whole body, but the kidney have the uh, vasopressin receptor and it will increase the water reabsorption. So what happens in your body is you have a constant level of vasopressin. It can de increase, decrease a little bit. And this is a linear relationship correlated with your plasma osmolarity. So when your osmolarity increase, automatically they're going to release more vasopressin. And when your osmolarity decrease, it, it, it decreases. So it's a constantly monitored constantly being released. Now let's look at the vessel recta. So I told you the the loop of Henle, that's the place reabsorption happens a lot. And the vessel recta is the capillaries surround the loop of Henle. And when the lumen go into the loop of Henle, the concentration 
in the medulla part start to increase. So from 300 milliosm to one to, uh, to 1200 milliosm. And the lumen inside, water want to flow out to dilute the lumen. So in the descending part of loop of Henle, a lot of water move out. And when the water move out, you don't want the water to stay here because it will, it will dilute the medulla. So you need the capillary quickly take the water back and send it back. So in the descending part of loop of Henle, a lot of water being reabsorbed. Now let's look at the ascending part. And this concentrated lumen, when you start to move up, and you say, okay, water flow back, then we will mess up everything. What's the point to do it? So they have to make it impermeable to water. So in the ascending part, this warm water won't be able to flow back. So it's impermeable to water. And when the highly concentrated lumen keep moving up, and you found, well, the outside environment become more and more diluted, and the water could not flow back because it's impermeable to water, impermeable to water. so they can make the salt move out. So the ascending part of the loop of handy is mainly place for ions reabsorption. So they take a lot of ions back. It's mainly for active transport. You take those ions back. And the same, once the ions flow back, move out, you go to the vessel recta and quickly being sent away. So you found the lumens movement is in counterclockwise. And the vessel recta movement clockwise. So we call this counter current exchange. It happens in the loop of Henley. And these slides tell you at the molecular level what happens in the ascending part. It's mainly active transport. So they use the sodium, potassium, chloride, symporter uh, to take the, the salt, a lot of salt back. And in the bas uh, basilar membrane, they put a lot of ion channel. And sometimes you use the sodium potassium pump and to move those ions back. So it's mainly active transport. And that's why the kidney use a lot of ATP. Okay, let's stop here.